Oh. Ready? Yeah. <laughs> oh. All right, so today is an awesome day. Our buddy, Bud, is here. So he's just home visiting the family and helping us out. So he's gonna be hauling the Corvette back for us all the way to Utah. We got a lot of stuff to do. Today is the big day. Today's the day we hopefully get this thing completely put together and possibly started. Yeah, yeah. We were supposed to leave two days ago and we're still here. We've got to get to a point where we can get our driveline built because we were supposed to have our drive shaft over to the driveline shop three, four, five days, four days ago. It was supposed to be there on Thursday, today's Monday. So we're gonna get everything hooked up to where we can size out the drive shaft and get it over to welding and balancing. So it's the only thing we're not able to do here because that takes specialized equipment. Most everything's coming here out of Summit. We're gonna get the motor mount bolts in and then we're gonna figure out how to get the cross member in and then size up the driveline. What we're gonna do is basically just lift up on the motor enough that we can wiggle a bolt in. On the last video, we stuck a couple undersized bolts in just to keep the holes. And now we've got the correct bolts. We're gonna get them installed, get ready to hold it. Passenger bolt started in the motor mount. The driver's side, we're having a little bit of an issue. Um, we've just got things a little bit cockeyed. Hillbilly's down working on that. All right, so we got both motor mounts in. Now we've got to figure out how to get the cross member in. Started to tighten up all the bolts we had to loosen to get the motor mount to shift right where we needed it. All right, so we're, we took the lifting plate off. We got a new gasket. We're putting this valley pan back on. We're getting everything torqued down to 18 foot pounds. So we're close to putting a carburetor on it? Hypothetically, yeah. Hillbilly got the bolts all tightened up on the motor mount, except for the actual motor mount bolt. We'll leave those loose until we have the cross member in. That way, if there's any movement that needs to happen, we can move it. Want to make sure you torque all your bolts properly. So this is the driveline kit that Summit Racing offers. One thing you want to check is the output shaft that comes in the kit is a 27 spline and it utilizes a 1350U joint. The rear end in this is a Curry 9 inch and the U joint that it utilizes is a 1330. So we got a conversion U joint that goes from a 1350 to a 1330. So we're going to pop that in and this will adapt to our rear end. And then also we had to upsize it to a 32 spline, which is a turbo 400 from a 27 spline that comes with it. So when you're getting these kits, you just want to make sure that you get all the correct parts. With our application, we're kind of Mickey Mouse and a few things together. So we got a few conversion pieces that's gonna make it all work. So we go from nitromethane back to regular gasoline. Just drop it out. Yes. Pump the residual. I love science. All right, so this is the 13, this is the 1330 joint. This is the 1350. So the difference is, is size, if I can pull that out. So that fits, which is a plus. Okay, I can't get it out. Okay, it's really tight. Anyway, that's a 1330 joint. This is a 1350, so you can see the difference in size. A 1350 is a lot bigger. It would be ideal if this was a 1350, but we don't want to change the yoke. It was easier and simpler to get a 1330 conversion joint. So that's gonna work. We're gonna put that in the in the cap of the drive shaft. So while they're doing the cross member, I'm gonna start doing the U-joints. So we're gonna set the transmission and the rear pinion to the same plane, because you don't want this. Because then your U-joints fight against each other and it vibrates like there's no tomorrow. Now we're gonna put the brackets on the cross member and try to size it up and figure out where it goes. With the Summit Racing Transmission Cross Member Kit, comes with some self-threading bolts. So we'll drill holes, we'll thread in like this. All right, so we've just about got the transmission set where we need it. We're just checking clearances and I think we're gonna be okay. Now I can get the clip in and everything works like it's supposed to. Right there. So that is gonna be our zero. Speedometer cover thing says 36, 37, 38, 39. 36, that six, uh, six o'clock, 37 is at five o'clock, 38 is four o'clock and 39 is at three o'clock. Why are you guys telling time right now? I'm not. All right, so we just got the cross member brackets installed. Super simple, you drill a hole, and then you put these self-threading bolts in. Super easy, so now we have six bolts in this. We're gonna get our cross member all bolted back in for the final time. Then driveline time? Yes, then we're gonna build the driveline. So we'll get this all bolted in tight, we'll get the support out of here, and this engine and transmission will be officially expertly installed. One thing that we did notice that we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to change our pinion angle. So to have this correct, to have our pan where it needs to be, to have the cross member mounted, we are at exactly five degrees. We're a little bit off on our rear end, 2.5 degrees. So we have to move it about a 16th. Now I wouldn't even call that an eighth of an inch. So what we might do is put some wedge blocks in and just shim it. And then once we get home, we can cut the perches off, we can reposition it and we can get it perfect. Now we're gonna build the drive shaft. I'm gonna bottom it out because you want to make sure that you have some slip. 
So that's bottomed out. That's too long. So we'll hold it here. We're gonna measure it out from yoke to yoke. And then I think we deduct an inch. So I called my buddy up at Full Torque Drive Shafts. He likes to do seven eighths of an inch of travel on the yoke. We've got our measurement, we're at 52 and a quarter. We're gonna take seven eighths of an inch off. For you mathematicians, that's 51 inches, 51 and three eighths of an inch. We're gonna leave an eighth of an inch gap for the welding. We have one chance, only one opportunity. So those of you that are curious, this is probably the greatest chop saw I've ever used in my whole entire life. And it's battery powered. That's probably the straightest chop saw cut I've ever seen. Usually halfway through they start to dog walk and you get a crooked cut. Not this one. Let me do a little. Now we've got the cap put in. We're gonna put it up in there and just make sure it fits. As soon as it fits, it's coming out and we're going to the driveline shop. this. That's like right at seven eight. That's like perfect. <laughs> yeah. All right, it fits. We have it clocked. We're gonna take it to the driveline shop. We've got the measurements for them. They can clock it a little bit better if they need. We just kind of clocked it on the ground. What clocking is, is you wanna make sure that your U-joint caps are in the exact same orientation. Otherwise, they fight against each other. That's money, dude. That's money, dude. All right, so we have got torque converter bolts going in. So we've got a big gap. Now, one thing you wanna do is check your gap because you don't want this torque converter shoved all the way into your pump but you don't want it pulled out of your pump. So the sweet spot is to have about an eighth of an inch gap. Three sixteenths is too big, eighth of an inch is just right. So we have measured and figured out that we need to put two washer shims in here in order to have the correct distance out of the pump. You can see that we've got about an eighth of an inch. So that's gonna pull the torque converter out of the pump a little bit so that when things expand, it doesn't shove the torque converter through the pump. So Hillbilly's gonna finish that up. We're gonna run to the driveline shop. So yeah, we're gonna go drop it off and they're gonna get it taken care of for us, hopefully pretty quick. We let them know it's coming and that it's kind of a very essential item. So if you guys are ever in need of some driveline work in the Akron, Ohio area, go to PSD. Heavy duty truck parts and service. They built drive shafts and these guys are gonna hook us up. They're getting it right in. They're gonna get it balanced up and get us on the road. Okay, I got the torque converter all bolted up with the spa uh, spacers in it. It's tightened down. So now I'm going to get the starter. These ears are hitting this sensor. So I got to loosen these T-screws, torque screws, clock it just a little bit one way or the other. Okay, so I got it clocked. Now I'm just test fitting it before I tighten them up and make sure that it's clocked where I need it and it'll clear everything. I'll smudge back right there, so that means Tighten the bad Larry up. Okay, so I got the torque screws tightened up, so now I can get this put back in. But I just got the oil filter installed, and he was grunting pretty hard, so I'm hoping he didn't over tighten it. Oh no, I, I don't tighten things like hillbilly tight. In hillbilly, you tighten things, it's over tight. Oh, hey, I don't have to worry about it coming loose. Starter's in, so now I'm going to do the dust shield. This will all be tidied up and done. Now that we have the transmission cross member in place, our fuel filter that I put in, I just kind of put it wherever I thought it could go. Um, it's in the wrong spot. So we're gonna relocate it to right here. So this is gonna allow for the fuel line and I have to do a return on our pressure regulator as well. I'm gonna mark this, get us a new screw hole, and then we're gonna shorten up the lines. I'm not gonna cut and resize the return line because I'm gonna be putting a T in here that our return from the front will hook into. So these are push lock style or twist lock style couplers. So about the only way to get it off is cut the hose open. Okay, so we're gonna let this one just kind of hang out until I get my T in here. Then I'll know where to shorten that one to. That is relocated. Once we get our pressure regulator hooked up, we can get our line here and get our return plumbed in. I think we're pretty well done underneath here for now. It hasn't even been two hours, and they called us. The drive line's finished. That's quick. We even got it painted. Voila! So Hillbilly is just gonna hurry and put the grease zerk in. As soon as he gets the grease zerk in, we're gonna install the drive shaft, get it all tightened up, grease it, and then this car's coming down on the lift, and we're gonna start working on the top side. I think our leaving tomorrow isn't out of the question. Things are starting to happen. All right, so we've just got these U-bolt, U-joint U U-bolts to tighten up. Hillbilly's gonna start greasing it. That better make it all the way back to Utah. That is Robbie Layton approved. Now we need a summit sticker. Robbie Layton drive shaft at your service. 
This drive shaft is done. I'm feeling pretty good. We have the rear end, the engine, the transmission, the drive shaft, all done. Now we just have to plumb everything, wire it, and hope for the best. It's just like the icing on the cake. Pitman arm is on. The thing about this car is you cannot work underneath it without safety glasses because the rust just keeps falling. So we've got this. Now we're gonna check exactly where our center is. Yeah, it bottomed out. Yeah. So we're all the way there. So I'm gonna paint marker, and then I'm gonna count revolutions. Very critical that we center everything, otherwise there's gonna be interference, and we don't want that. So what we're doing now is we're just, we're figuring out the tie rods. We've got the gearbox centered, we've got the center drag link centered, and now we're getting the tires as close to straight as possible, and then we're gonna get the lengths of the tie rods. This side, the tie rod is way too long, and this side, the tie rod is way too short. We were hitting when we were steering, we were hitting the oil pan and it wasn't bottoming out. So we're gonna extend this tie rod and shorten this one and it should work. We've got it adjusted. We're gonna max it out that way and then max it out this way and see if we've got it right. Boom, look at that sun. Oh, it's cause we're hitting a bolt. All right, so we just had to trim up the bolt because we were bottoming out. So let's hit it again. All right, so we have this fully adjusted. It goes bump stop to bump stop. There's only one spot right here when it goes all the way fully bumped out to the driver's side. It barely touches the oil pan, but we're gonna leave it because it's barely, barely, barely touching. And we're gonna check it on the on the ride home. Okay, I had to pull the bearing cap back off because when me and Robbie was turning the tire back and forth to check the turning, we noticed that there was a little bit of slop in it. So I'm just taking it back off, retightening it, getting it all reset again. Wheel bearing is now back to being tight again. So now I can put the tire back on. This side should be completely done. We just gotta go work on that side with the strut. Just got the ball joint loose. I loosen the nut, hit the side of the spindle to uh, get the ball joint to drop out of the spindle. So now I'll get the chain along. So that way I can suck the suspension up to get the nut off. So I can release it all the way so that I can turn the spring nut a lot easier. Cause right now it does not turn very easy at all. So now I'm just measuring to make sure that they're even, yeah, adjusted exactly. evenly. I am finishing up the fuel lines to the firewall. So we've got our, we've got the rest of our parts here. So now we can run our return. I've got a fitting in here. I've got my 90. We're gonna need some more fuel hose. I don't quite have enough to do the return. So we're just gonna plumb the feed line for now. We're just about to the point where every single thing underneath besides the exhaust is finished. But I'm getting excited. We have a humongous list started, but I just wanna show you the most important thing on our list. For those of you that can't read, that says rowdy burnouts. That's right, as soon as this thing is capable, we're doing some rowdy burnouts with it. All right, so let's run to the retail store, grab a few more parts. We're gonna grab some degreaser and some total interior cleaner because we're gonna have to clean the seats and make it not smell like a rat's butt. So we're trying to figure out a shifter for the car because it's got a manual valve body in it. So this one where you feel like you're flying an airplane. Getting more parts. Hopefully our last time. I doubt it. Me too, until we leave. At least we're in the right spot. Yeah. A couple more times and we'll be good. I would like to think this is the last time. Six more. I think six is a little much. But no, this is our last time. We're not gonna need anything else. We just got our last load of parts. So we're gonna take him back to the studio and get this thing done. I wanna thank today's sponsor, Avalon King, for sponsoring this video. As a follow-up, I wanna remind you guys the 4th of July explosive sale ends on Tuesday night. So head over to the website, click the link in the description. Don't forget to go get your three armor shield kits for $99. That's a savings of $125. While you're on the site, check out their other awesome freebies. Click the link in the description. Don't wait because Tuesday night, this deal's going away. Anyway, back to the video. Okay, now that we have the car lowered down and pretty much 99.9% .9 of underneath done, getting the shifter all hooked up and in place. We're at the point now where we can start putting oil in this thing. And then, look, I even have you a dippy stick. <gasps> so I know how much oil's in it. We're using our wonderful Summit Racing branded oil and I just can't pour oil worth the heck and it is going everywhere. I'm building a bracket to hold the fuel pressure regulator. It's gonna span where the heater box used to go because we're not putting that in. So I'm gonna bolt my bracket on it and then I'll go grab or screw it in. Oh, okay. All right, so I have my fuel pressure regulator, my return line, my feed line, and my line to the carburetor ran. So next I'm gonna work on getting the intake manifold installed. Dude, we are so close. I cannot I, wait. So I just had to drill a couple holes into a plate because this one ear is not going to hit anything because the hole in the floor. So I'm going to put it there, two bolts back here and one up here. <laughs> Bye. I dropped my plate. 
I'm putting the intake on. I'm gonna just clean all the surfaces off. That way my gasket mating surface is perfect. Nice little ones over. Make sure that your mating surface is clean. Is it working? Mm -hmm. It's working real nice. So we've got the intake in. I've got the breather, the breathers on all of the thingies. We've got a PCV valve and two other vents that we're putting them on. Hillbilly's got the shifter mounted. The floor is super crusty, so it's flexing the whole floor. Now he's gonna be working on the on bench top bleeding the master cylinder so that we can start getting everything ready to breathe to bleed the brakes. Getting ready to bench bleed the master cylinder. It's gonna take the air and get the air out of the master cylinder so that there's just fluid. Go. See all that air? You just pump it till there's no air. The big huge bubbles are gone. There's some really, really fine bubbles, but that's okay. It's bled out. Okay, we're gonna let Hillbilly put those lines back on and we're gonna let this sit overnight with the cap off. That way, if there's any residual air, it'll come out. Then tomorrow we can bleed these brakes. We are looping the heater hose lines because we're not running a heater. We're just gonna block it off until we figure out a heater situation in this car. You know, we killed it today. We got a ton of stuff done. It might not look like a ton of stuff is done, but there's a bunch of small stuff checked off the list. Like the fuel systems hooked up, ready to be hooked up to the carburetor. Intakes in. Our accessory drive is done. We're in good shape. I'm very excited for tomorrow and I cannot wait to hear this thing run in all its glory. Okay, well, we're gonna go get some sleep, so it is tomorrow. So it is the next day and we're getting back to work on the 6.2. We ran into a little bit of an issue. So we've got to build a power steering line today. Yesterday we fought the pulley to get it all the way on. We're gonna pull the pulley off and build us a power steering pressure line. We've got a carburetor to install today. We've got fuel lines to run. We've got brake lines to bleed. We've got an MSD ignition system to put on. We've got a lot of stuff. The goal is to get this thing to start because we're leaving tomorrow. So I've got to build a pressure line. That's why we're pulling the pulley off. And then the return should be simple. It should just come all the way over to the front into the return. And then we're gonna move on to the brakes. We're trying to do a few things up top before we go underside. Okay, so I got the seats pulled out of the car so I can go through and vacuum and get all this stuff out of it. Dust, all these acorns, because when we're driving back, we don't want to be sitting in here with all this garbage and rust dust. And now that I got all the big stuff up, it is time to vacuum. <laughs> I'm using this power steering kit from Summit Racing and I'm building my high pressure line. I'll tighten these two up and that'll be my side that goes on the pump. And then I'll size it up and put an end on it. I don't know how many more times we can safely vacuum in this before there's no floor left. Oh wow, that's clean. I decided to pull the pump off because I wanted to make sure that the fitting that I was putting in is correct. So it's an internal O-ring. We're converting it to 6AN JIC. So I have to disassemble things to make sure that my brain understands. So now we'll put it all back together. Okay, I'm working on the steering. So it's a new gearbox. It sits closer to the firewall, so we have to shorten the steering shaft up because it has power steering instead of just manual steering, so it makes the gearbox longer. So now we're just cutting the shaft. Don't want to take too much off, so I'm taking two inches off at a time until we get where we need to be. Now I'll slide it down into the steering column, and I think we have to go two more inches. Yeah, go two more. Perfect. Yep, so we have about a one inch gap, so that'll at least That'll give us the... Yeah, that'll give us room to work with. I've also got the power steering line cut. What you do with this stainless steel line is you actually put a piece of tape on this. So when you cut it, it doesn't fray. Then what you do, there's an actual tool that you can round out the internal sleeve. But I found a screwdriver that's the exact size and I just round it up. This slides inside of it. Now I'm not going to push this in right now because I've got a ferrule that needs to go on. So what I do, I've got my lock collar on there. I'm gonna take the tape off. This is gonna flare the stainless out just slightly. I like to kind of pull it away a little bit, give it some room. And then you've got a brass ferrule that's actually gonna go on the outside of this plastic liner. So once you know you don't have any stainless steel, work it down on the plastic till it bottoms out. And then you push it till it's bottomed out. Now I'm gonna install my fitting. Well. I went to go take this off and the bolt broke off. That's not even the factory horn. That's a Ford horn, dude. Someone added this. This is aftermarket and it kind of looks like an ear. How fun is... <laughs> okay, so I got everything, all the bolts pulled out. So this steering column should just come out. It's moving. And there's the steering column. Um, you want to make sure that you clock your fittings correctly. I know I'm close to being tight. This revolution, I'm going to stop if I can get it to move. So there's my mark. All right, so we've got this as tight as it'll go. I'm gonna test fit it, but I think it's gonna work. Good news, I've got the pressure side line all the way back on. It's installed on the gearbox and it's installed on the pump. So Hillbilly's gonna start the installation of the pulley back on, and then we're gonna get the belt put on. Pressure line and belt, done. Expertly installed, 
to start marking off the list. Fuel lines. Half done. Shifter. Half done. Transmission dipstick. Done. Bleed brakes. Not done. Half done. Secure brake lines. Not done. Exhaust. Not done. Intake manifold. Done. Motor oil. Fill transmission. Done. Not. Install seats. Mm -hmm. Not done. Fix home floors. Not done. Wiring. Not done. Windows. Not done. Door latches. Not done. Windows regulator. Not done. Gas. Not done. Radiator. Not done. Cooling. Not done. MSD wiring. Not done. Steering. Half done. Cross off ring. Battery. Not done. Power steering. Half done. Yeah, this couple. is progress. <laughs> yeah. Good job. Four things. Okay. Yeah. Four whole things. So that's where the return's gonna run. I made it a little bit long, so it clears the belt. We're gonna do a clamp right here, so it can't come in and hit. And once we get a hose clamp, we'll have the power steering system done. So the reason I'm changing the uh, shifter is because if you notice, you have to, in order to get it out of park, you have to pull the handle one way or the other, and the whole four moves trying to do it. I don't know how many times it would do that before it actually ripped the shifter, the shift hugging off the floor. So instead of worrying about that and fighting that, we're going to a style that you just, with ease. No pressure to move it so we don't rip the floor. So Justin just had a run to the retail store again. So there's our, our next run. I'm gonna hurry and pull this brake line out, re-flare it. It's got a single flare and it needed a double flare on it. Get it back in and these brake lines should be bleedable. So while everybody else kind of has a task, I picked up the grease gun and I'm gonna knock out grease in the car real quick. I am getting the steering shaft all set up to where it needs to be. Got it shortened down. I have to shorten it a little bit more. So I gotta trim it up. I had to put a little bit of a slight bend in this so that way when it bolts to the floor, it's sitting straight for the steering wheel because right now when it bolts to the floor, it sits on an angle and I can't get the steering wheel in there. So now it's bent to where I can get the steering wheel through it and still have this bolt to the floor. So I have a Griffin oversized radiator that we're going to put in this to keep this LS cool driving across the country. It did not come with a fan shroud, so I have to modify this fan shroud to work on the Griffin radiator. I'm going to first cut out a hole for our lower, our lower hose. And once I do that, I'll put it back over on the radiator and I'll show you guys what I'm doing. I'm going to just take my time, measure it all out, and cut this thing down to size so that we can get it to fit. So we got that hole cut out. So that's exactly what I wanted. We're gonna have to do a hole saw here, and a hole saw here, and one there. We're gonna notch it here, notch it here, and notch it here. And the reason I'm doing that, not just cutting it off, is I need this structure in the bottom to accept the 16 inch fan. And then I'm gonna cut here so that we can slide this shroud down inside of these grooves and get it all the way to the radiator. And then somehow we'll bolt it into those. So this is a round stock. And if you notice, this is only rounded on the edges and flat here. Robbie calls that a double D. So I have to make this steering shaft into a double D. There it is. And it works. Okay, so what we got here is a retrofit electric windshield wiper motor. The one on the car is the old school vacuum one, and it's bad. So we went ahead and got electric, electric retrofit one, so now I'm just gonna figure out how it goes in place so we can actually have windshield wipers if we need it. So right now we're bleeding the brakes, so we have Bud pumping the pedal. They have Hillbilly under the car hitting the bleeders. We're bleeding brakes. Bleeding brakes. Demery's now getting a new floor put on her side. <laughs> So I'm gonna go ahead and throw our thermostat housing on. So we have a thermostat here, and then we have this Summit adjustable thermostat. So this will be nice because once we get our radiator in, we can go ahead and move this and get this positioned to line up best with our radiator and then get our radiator hose installed. I'm gonna go ahead, throw my gasket on my thermostat and grab our housing. It's all tucked in there. So once I get the radiator in here, I'll be able to position it better. That's the nice thing about these Summit filler necks. Wherever I need this to adjust, I'll be able to adjust it. That's installed. You know, I'm about to move on to start putting the carburetor on, getting this thing dressed out so we can make some fire. Wow, that hole right, right there. there. And this one right here. These will be covered by the seat. I was worried about your feet. Dude, that looks so good. I'm extremely impressed though, Billy. Well, I see you made a new hole. You don't need anything there, do you? No. So the new door latches and the new windows are in, they just showed up. So I'm not tightening these just yet. I'm just gonna snug them up and make sure that it hits where it needs to and latches. Ooh. Got a door. I just trimmed up the bottom of the shroud. Now I'm gonna go test fit it. And then I've got to slice it here because I'm gonna slide it down over the radiator. Once we have the slits, it's gonna slide down over. We're gonna figure out a way to attach it to the radiator. Bada bing, bada boom! Brand new winder. Looking good. 
Ooh. Goes up and down. Figuring out how to install these seats. Oh. It works. Does it slide forward and backwards? Yeah, I fixed that. All right, so it took me about two and a half hours to build this. We bought this Griffin radiator and they didn't come with a fan or a fan shroud. So we got a universal 16 inch fan shroud and a 16 inch Be Cool fan from Summit. And I have modified and made it work and bolted it to my radiator. So I cut out everywhere that all my fittings are at. We've got clearance here, as you can see. Um, I built some brackets and we've bolted it to our mounting location. So this is gonna go fit into the car, into the factory location, but it's gonna mount on the V8 side of the course port. So it's gonna be out front and this thing's gonna keep it cool. It's three inches thick, it's double cord, transmission cooler in line. It just looks good. I mean, this thing is like just awesome. We're gonna get this put in and then we've got to wire up our MSD box, we're gonna try to fire that car. So that's the goal. If we can get that thing fired, we can leave tomorrow. I freaking love bats. So I'm thinking we gotta grab the hammer and modify the bottom. We need about an inch of clearance. We don't have enough clearance. Somebody built an emblem out of Bondo. Then they painted it. So that is impressive. Try this again. Ha ha! She fits. I'm gonna start figuring out the upper radiator hose. Got the stainless steel flexible. So it's time to check my things off the list so we can check carburetor off. The other half of the fuel lines because the fuel system's done and that's it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it is what it is. There's so many other little things that have got done. Oh, I did half the greasing everything. I can check off grease, but I'm not checking off everything. Hey, Billy built some brackets and I'm super pumped on them. There's more bolts holding the seat in now than what there was factory. Do it. It's not too bad. <laughs> Honestly. I think that's on the side. Oh yeah. Should we rip this crap out before we go and vacuum it all up? That's up to you. This is actually pretty comfortable. What about the bath seat? That's right where you're gonna be sitting while he's in the Tahoe. You and Snickers. Dude, Snickers is gonna have his head right out the window right here. Living his best life. It's Stitch. Stitch, Lilo, whatever. Look at that. Snickers sounds better. Dude, that dog is gonna be living its best life right here just. And then look, we'll have the AC on. So the timeline is noon tomorrow, right? Yeah. We have to leave the Airbnb tomorrow morning. Yeah, because I have my dentist point. We got to make it back to in time. I know. Driver's seat, done. Passenger back seat, done. Now I should do the passenger front seat. Before I put the okay. passenger seat in, I'm going to want to cut the hole for the shifter cable and get the shifter mounted. So that way, all I have to do is the seat. Get the shifter mounted, and then I'll get the seat done, and then we'll get the shifter hooked up underneath. The shifter's only getting three bolts to hold it in, but it's holding it. It's a rough shape. <laughs> it's very rough shape. Okay, so I'm gonna take some spray lithium white grease, stick on the track. That way these slide like they're supposed to. Makes life a little easier, especially if you have to build brackets. I hope it moves. I really need it to. Why? <laughs> build mounts. Do you care if the back's not mounted down just the front? Yep, definitely care. It's moving. I don't think there's gonna be anything left of that seat. Look at all that. We might have to talk to Justin see if he has one in an old car at his house. Just don't mind my wiring, it all makes sense. <laughs> This is what we're gonna do to get this thing across the country. But I'm not hooking up, not hooking up my power wire yet. This is our ignition. We got a fuel pump. I'm gonna crank it. I wanna get the oil pressure going throughout the motor. And then this is gonna excite everything. Just kidding. Um, we gotta put gas in it first. I don't know what's wrong with it. Ain't got no gas in it. So it's like 11 o'clock at night. The night before we're supposed to leave, we don't have this wired, but we've got it rigged up. We're gonna derby car style switch panel this, I think, to get it across the country. <sighs> because we're running out of time. Okay, where's our gas? That's a hollow gas tank. One problem solved. It's got gas in it. <laughs> ah! Fresh gas and a fresh gas tank. Oh, that's unconverted horsepower. Yes, 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 yes. Now, as long as our fuel pressure regulator works, our return line works, our carburetor works, It'll be all fine. It'll be fine. I'm not worried about it. It's we gonna go whop, yep. whop, whop. 
It's doing something. It made noise. What if your gauge is broke? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yeah, it ain't coming out of that fuel filter. Our feed line is super pumped up. So basically what's going on is we're not getting any gas. So literally ain't got no gas in it. Do you have the send? The center line is the return line on one of those filters. And then the three eighths is the supply line. No, but what? So you're trying to feed through the return line. So I have them backwards? Yeah. You're lying to me. You're telling me the truth. We have them backwards. Cool. <laughs> Problem solved. We'll, we'll hurry and switch those. Yep. I screwed up. Humble new beginnings, okay? I'm so excited right now. Is the camera on, Demery? It is. Okay, I'm so pumped. All right, so we've got one little small fuel leak. We're gonna take care of that and then coming to you live from the studio. <laughs> oh. Ready? Yeah. Oh. I think we're out of time. How could we be out of time if it's in last? Maybe that? It made fire. Switch those coil pack. So it says passenger and driver. We're just gonna flip them around and see. No, switch them back. What the heck is that noise? <laughs> sounds less than ideal. It sounds like it's out of time, but it's impossible that it's less. out of time. Well, we don't want LS1. Wait a second. What? It could be that vacuum hose on the back that's not plugged, sucking plugged. straight air into the intake. You can see it from right here. It's plugged. As much as I wanted to show you guys this thing start, it's it's late. It's late. We're tired. We've had a long day. Our brains are all frazzled. We're gonna come back in the morning. We might be flying home.